Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and we post reaction videos each and every day on this channel. But there's other things that we do. You can find them um in the description box somewhere on our channel. And today I'm going to be reacting to a long video, so I won't spend so much time talking in the beginning. As you can tell from the title, today I'll be reacting to um, Did Jesus Do That? Speaker's Corner. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. So, did Jesus do that? Jesus was God. He's God. Let, let's say He's God, right? Yeah. Did He submit to someone else? Willingly and sincerely to that someone else. Yes, but he's God, so, he's so if someone submits to someone else, considering that someone else to be true God, then he's a Muslim. Did Jesus consider the one who submitted to that he's the true God only? Jesus is God. I, I hear you, but did he? Submit to someone who he considered to be the only true God. Well, he considers himself. No, he is the okay, let me help you with the scripture. In John 17 3, Jesus said, The Father is the only true God. And he submitted to the Father always, right? Yes, but he is also God. He, him and the Father are one. But let's talk so, about John 73 first and then we can deal with oneness of the Father and the Son. Because the disciples are one too. But it doesn't make them God, does it? There is a different well, kind of one. There uh, but Jesus said, just like I am the Father are one. So this oneness that he's talking to these disciples, just like I am the Father are one, you my disciples will be one with us. So the oneness is exactly the same according to Christ. Us, us. One with us in the, in the New Testament. I can show you the reference. So when 17. Jesus submits to his father and says, not according to my will, but according to your will. So he is a true submitter and surrenderer to the father who he said in John 17, 3, you are the only true God. So now we realize Jesus submits to his one true God. So he's a Muslim still. But he was not a follower of Islam. Moses was not a follower of Muhammad in that sense, but he was a Muslim during his time. Okay. Every prophet and messenger were Muslims. Has to be, because you have to submit yourself to God, to the one and only God. Hmm? Which God? Okay. The God of Abraham, Moses, Jacob, Solomon, Noah, the God of all the prophets. Did Jesus submit to a different God instead of the God of Abraham? instead of the God of Moses? Or did he submit his will to the God of all the prophets? He did submit to the God of all the prophets. God is the God of all the prophets. So when Jesus bowed down and put his head on the ground and he was praying to God, who was he praying to? Not the God of the Egyptians. He was praying to the God of Abraham, to the God of Moses. The God of Adam, the God of all the prophets in the past, to his God. Do you no, think, notes coming out, yeah? Do you think God prays to God? God doesn't pray to anyone. Well, actually, in Hebrews it says that Jesus is in heaven at the right hand of God interceding for us, which means that he is praying to God about us, concerning us. Does God pray to someone else? God praying to God. Do you know, okay, do you know what God praying means? A prayer of mine would be, I pray to someone because I am not the one able to answer my prayer. Imagine I say, oh God, remove this suffering from me. What it means is I am unable to remove the suffering, something that is before the moon. So when I pray, oh God, help me because I'm helpless. I know I cannot help myself. That's why I pray. If Jesus prays to anyone, it shows his helplessness well, and his need and his deficiency. It's a very narrow definition of prayer because there's prayer. Prayer can be adoration. It can be uh, expressing um, yes. like worship of God. It's not necessarily needing and therefore um, acknowledging a deficiency that I can't 
fulfill. I appreciate that's part of it, but um, adoration and worship is really part of it. You're right. Well. You're absolutely right. Prayer encompasses a lot of things, yes. but I specifically highlighted those areas where Jesus showed his helplessness. He went in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he left the disciples and said, you wait here while I go and pray. And what did he pray? He says, let this cup be away from me. Not according to my will, but according to yeah, your will. I mean. So he submitted his will to, the Father. to his God. And he said, it's not my will for that. What about your will? And that's why in the Lord's Prayer, what do you read in the Lord's Prayer? Or our Father who is in heaven, or our Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. What do you read? Oh, our Father. You don't say, oh, our Father and Son and the Holy Spirit in heaven or on earth. Remember, God came on earth according to Christian theology. But the same God is praying up there. Oh, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done. Whose will be done? Whose kingdom to become? His. Jesus acknowledges only one person as the true God. Do you know who this one person is? It's the Father. In Christian, Christian, uh, Orthodox belief, God is three persons, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But Jesus acknowledges God to be one person, only the Father. He says, you, you, the only true God. John 17, 3, shall we read this? You can read it up yourself now or later. John 17, 3 is a verse which, the, the verse which the Trinitarians tried to feel that it was never there. Because that's one statement Jesus identifies who his God is. Is there any other statement the where Jesus said that he's also you, part of God? Have you read all of the Bible? Uh, yes, actually, a lot more times than that one time he says, I am. Why yeah. does he say, I okay. am the way that Can you show me one instance, Father, just one, where he says, I am God? Just one instance where Jesus okay. said, I am God. From yes, anywhere in your New Testament. Yes, sir. Remember, we are talking about Jesus claiming. Yes, on are. this earth while he was here, he's saying, I am God. This is what you expect, right? I agree. You should expect that to, for someone who's God on earth to say that. I am God. Otherwise, people would not believe in him or not even understand or know him or recognize him. So, did he even say such a statement even once? I have read the New Testament. I haven't found it. Maybe you can help me with that. Statement in John 8, 58. Can you read it? Before Where? Abraham was, Jesus said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. But that's not what the lady was saying here. The lady was saying, Jesus says, I, I am, am God. But, 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 I am is God. Please, well, one second. When you make a statement, someone says, I am God, there are three words in that statement. I am God. Okay, yeah. and what was the name of God? God was speaking to Moses in the Old Testament. And God's said, name. Would I tell the people that my God's name is? What is your name? And he said, I am. No, I beg to yes. differ. The na Moses, upon him the peace, was not speaking English. He was speaking Hebrew. In the Hebrew he says, Yahye, Yesher, Yahye. I am who I am. If you look at the New Testament, the name Yahweh is not found even once in the entirety of the New Testament. The name Abraham or Abrahamov or Abraham is found in the Old Testament and in the verse you quoted. Verse you quoted, before Abraham, I am, yes? Prin, Abraham, Genesta, or Genomai, Ego, Amy. That's the Greek. Did you hear the word Yahweh? No. Yeah, 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 sure, you ain't not. But you heard the word Abraham. The name, personal name, is retained even when you cross culture and boundary to a different culture, a different language. If my name is Mansur, in English, still Mansur. In Chinese, still Mansur. If the name of God is Yahweh, it's still Yahweh in any other language. But you would not find, surprisingly, this name in any of the New Testament, even once. So the fact remains, Jesus did not use the name Yahweh, unless you can prove me wrong. Well, my Bible is in English. So. No, no, you are quoting the, the, English. The, the response to that, though, is that they pick up stones yeah, to stone them. The Jewish leaders understood what that statement meant. But actually, no. Okay. If someone, oh, let me explain. If somebody takes the accusation of people 
to the evidence of accusation in any court of law, it will not be accepted. Why? People make accusations against you, like, oh, you are a bad woman, you are a bad man. Did you actually do anything to be bad or not? So accusations are not evidence by themselves. The same Jewish people, not anyone different, said, you are a madman, demon possessed. So do you take their statement to be true? You should do, be consistent. If you take accusations of the Jewish... What were they reacting to? They sorry, sorry, sorry. If you take accusations of the Pharisees and the Sadducees to be true, you need to be consistent in your approach. They, they accuse, were accusing. Look, they were accusing Jesus to be demon-possessed, a madman. You're being inconsistent because they were not accusing here. They did not make a verbal accusation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, they responded to his statement. In fact, in fact, in the same passage, if you look at it, if you read, if you remind yourself, they were not surprised that Jesus was claiming to be God. Not at all. What is the context? He said, Abraham saw my day and he rejoiced. And they said, you're not even 50 years old. How can you say you met Abraham? So the context is, he is claiming, Jesus is making a statement, Abraham and me, at one point we were contemporary. He saw me and he was happy. He rejoiced. So it's not about being divine in any shape or form. It's about being there with Abraham. Now the problem is this kind of interpretation is very faulty. Why? Melchizedek. Melchizedek? He was also contemporary of Abraham. But not only that. Melchizedek have no beginning. No end. So he existed even before without a beginning, without an end. Does that make Abraham div uh, Melchizedek divine or God? It doesn't. So even if Jesus was there at the time of Abraham, like Melchizedek was, it doesn't make Jesus God, it doesn't make Melchizedek God. Where does it say Melchizedek had no beginning and had no end? It's in Hebrew 7. Hebrew, Hebrew 7. Excuse me, have you read John 1? John 1 1. Yeah, in John 1 14. Um, John 1 1 is John speaking, right? He's an evangelist writer, he's speaking. Is he quoting Jesus what Jesus said? That's what's important. I because but, but Jesus, Jesus said. Yeah, he please. specifically said in John 10 30, I and the Father are one. Okay. He's talking to his disciples. Okay. Shall we deal with that first and go to the beginning of this? I and the Father are one. One what? One is being. Okay. So the being you've added to interpret what it means, right? If they are one, that means they are one thing. Right. So I and the Father are one. Let's say it means one in divinity, right? Then that is a clear enough evidence, according to Christ, that the Father and Jesus is one God. Yes. Right. Open up John again and read a few chapters later. Can I borrow your Bible? Verse 17. Don't hmm? drop anything out of it. Right. Verse 17. Okay. Now, the same author, John, continues by saying, I'm going to read from the beginning of this chapter or, or, or a section. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the whole world, uh, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. Hear this again, that they may be one as we are one. So the oneness Jesus is talking about, listen carefully, the oneness Jesus is saying, just I and you, the Father, are one. They may be also one like us. So are you now suggesting God is 14 in one? Okay, what he's talking Do you want to read and tell me what it means? Oh, hold on, hold on. What he's talking about is he's talking about the Holy Spirit. How when you believe in Jesus, then you get the Spirit, which is the third part of the Trinity. So just like they are a part of Trinity, that does not mean that we become the Holy Spirit. I'm saying that this is what this is talking about. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That all of them may 
Jesus, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I'm in you. May they also believe in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. So they may be one as we are one. So if they do these conditions, it's a conditional statement. It's a conditional statement, right? Yes. If they fulfill those conditions, yes. they may be one with us as me, the Father, are one. So if the Father and if the Father and Jesus are one divine being, the disciples will also be one divine. That's what Jesus is saying. We have to leave, but okay. I just want to leave you with John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Go down to verse 14. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. That is Jesus talking about the Word is God. And I know you're going to try and say that Jesus didn't say that specifically, but John... But still, I can have but some John, response to that. But John wrote the same thing, so you believe the book's credible, right? John yes. wrote here... It's the same book. No, no, sure, sure, no problem. Let's see, let's see the belief of John, right? The belief of John, not about what Jesus is saying. The author, what is belief? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Visualize it, because often it's helped visualizing. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with someone. The Word was with who? God. And the Word was God. Slow down, slow down. Just to visualize it. No, no, that's what I'm tr trying to do exactly. So, the Word, which is in the beginning, was with God. Then John returns to describe who this word was. Yeah? So this word is also God. So in the beginning, how many gods were there? No, 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 no. Let's try again. In the beginning was the word who was with God. No, no. No, no, please, 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 please. In the beginning, the word was with God, and the word itself is God. So the word which was God was with God. So how many gods John is talking about? According to John 1 1. According to John, there's one God. No. According to John 1. No, please, 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 please. That's why I said visualize it. According to John. Not in my way. Yes, you are. John, John says it very clearly. In the beginning. The word and the God were separate. Listen. The word and God are the same. They're not two different things. You can have a government. The word was God. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. Let me do my visualization. Go ahead. The word was God, correct? Yeah. The word equals God. Which word? The word, Jesus. Yeah. Now, which word? The word equals God. Sure. See how you the word. It. No, no, no problem. Whose word? The word. The word. This the word. word. Okay. Jesus. Can the word God exist God by itself? Equals God. It's one. Okay. Can words exist by itself without a speaker? Can words exist without a speaker? You have your own word, right? Okay. Your words are dependent on you. The words cannot speak. The words cannot speak themselves. They need a speaker. They need an agent. The word needs an agent to be spoken. The word cannot speak on itself. The word is someone else's. In his terms, in person's terms. Okay. So if you say God, okay, does God speak? Yes. Is Jesus the word of God? Yes. Which word of God is Jesus? All of it or part of it? Jesus is God. Let's understand the word of God. God has okay. God has words. He has infinite words. Like for example, he says, "Let there be light," and there was light in the Old Testament, Genesis. So God spoke the words, and they became reality as the universe, the light, so on. Which word of God is Jesus? All of the words, or a particular word? It's eternal. No, no, no. All of them or part of it? All of them. Okay, all of them. So if Jesus is the all of the words of God, if Jesus is all the words of God, and the word became flesh, now can God speak any more of his own? Because whatever he speaks is the word speaking, because that's his word, all of it. So so let me No no let me help you. When Jesus speaks, no, no, to understand to because she's a Christian, you don't need to help her. Um, no, 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 thank no, you. you can't when Jesus when, when Jesus, listen, when Jesus speaks, right, he is the word of God, right? Do you agree? Can we believe that God is all powerful? Hmm? God is all powerful? He is all powerful of all things. And God is, can be everywhere, right? No. God can be everywhere? Do you really believe God is everywhere inside your brain too? You don't believe God can be everywhere? I'm asking you a question. Is God in hell? Well, eternal That's wrath. Okay, no, no. Is God in a hellfire? No, that's separated so from Okay, God. is hellfire part of everywhere? 
hell is separation from God? Peace. Hell is separation. When you say everywhere, remember you said everywhere. Is hellfire part of everywhere? Or including yeah, everywhere? Talking about, she just, talking about she just all asked you. She just asked you. Is hellfire part of everywhere? Hell, hell is separation, separation from God. God. Take Excuse it. Me. Hell is a physical place where people burn. You don't. Know. That's the Bible. It's eternal. It's an eternal place, not a physical that place. Doesn't it's matter. Eternal. But it's a physical place. So it's part of a space. It's somewhere. So is hellfire part of everywhere? Okay, I apologize. I said everywhere. No, we said that right. God is everywhere, not hell. So is but God hell in is hellfire? No, hell, hell is separation that means, from God. That means the place of fire. Oh, oh, thank you so much. So the place of fire, people, when they get burnt, Okay, Eternally, so which is part of everywhere. For saying everywhere. So right. God can be in this, in this world. It doesn't befit God. Okay, we're talking about Okay. I just told you it doesn't befit God to do things or be things which doesn't befit His Majesty. For example, it doesn't befit God to become like a human being. It doesn't befit Him. Why? Okay. What's the difference between a human being and God? Essential differences. Okay. And God. What are the crucial, essential differences between human being that God has created and God Himself? Hmm? What do you want me to say? There are essential, critical differences between man and God. Between human and God. Yes, definitely. Humans are created. God is not. So what, what point is that? Men are not. Right. So, so when you say God becomes a man. Right, you are trying to apologize. make God. We've got dinner reservations. Okay. I do apologize. All right. You Thank take you so care. Much, right. Sir. Um. Thank take take this the standing position of Jesus. Thank you. I got. I got. Stop. We got the work. Okay. We don't need Stop. That. Not making it. This was very interesting to watch. I like the way the conversation was going in the beginning. Um. These are people that appreciate whatever religion they follow, and there's so much respect through this video everyone was giving points according to what they believe or how they best um interpret whatever these these religions hold it was very very interesting to watch i actually love this video you get to see people's opinions uh concerning different uh questions a big shout out to the person that suggested this although at the end of the um video i feel like someone was being rude you don't interrupt someone you don't get anything by interrupting someone for you to enjoy something or get knowledge from someone, you have to be open-minded and you have to let them talk. One has to listen, one has to talk and you can switch those roles. Otherwise, this was very, very informative. Thank you for giving us this reaction. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video. you